Right, hello, my name is Fiona. Uh, in the Viking Age, I am known by, as, the, uh, as Wolfruna, um, but in the 21st century, I'm called Fiona and I'm here to talk to you about the pottery that was found here when the archaeologists were digging this site in the 1970s. When you visit a museum like ours, there might be a tendency to think there's not a lot that we do that is similar to our Viking ancestors. I think you might be surprised. Their legacy is in the words that we speak, in the way we dress, in the things that we use in our homes, pottery just being one of them. When the archaeologists were digging this site in the 1970s, there were an awful lot of pot shards that were found. A lot of them were cookware, like this one. Just ordinary blackware, not very decorated, in fact, hardly any decoration at all. If you're using it as cookware, you don't really need it. Um, but it's just a serviceable little pot. Uh, but that's where we come to the status of potters. We've never been really high status. Clay is available, it's free. You only have to find it, dig it up, and then you can make something from it. The skills required are fairly easy to learn. The pots themselves, they're pretty disposable. They will break, but they're also easy to replace. So with this, there's plenty of cookware out there. And when we look at these objects, we can tell from the marks on them, how they were made, and how they were fired. With these, you can tell that these were made on a wheel. You can see the ridges on the side, which will tell us that. As that pot is spinning, your fingers make those ridges to show us. On the bottom, when they are taken off the wheel, you need a wire to pull through. And the marks left by that wire, we found those same marks on some of the shards from the dig. So with archaeology, we can look at those pot shards and use them to date sites. We can look at the form and the function. Sometimes we can even reconstruct the entire vessel from the pieces left behind. But those pottery bits, they, we can look at the design to actually see if they resemble any pieces from other places. With some of these, we can see that we've been trading just people on, on our own shores. With this style of pot, we've got the Torxy type ware. And we have one very beautiful, big Torxy pitcher. But we can only turn around and say that some of these are like the things that have turned up in Torxy. One of the things about the York pottery is that we've never found any of the kiln sites. Where this is concerned, we know from Torxy that we have found the kiln sites. So we can actually say, looking at the pottery, this is very similar, but when we've looked and analysed some of the pieces, the clay is not from Torxy. It might be from more local sources. So with that one, we have to just simply say it's Torxy type wear. We can get designs from things. We can look at things and go, oh, we like that. We can make that. And this is what we think is happening in the local area. However, some of the pottery that we have is from further afield. And when we look at some of the details on this one, for instance, is a replica of Rhenish pottery. And this is coming from the Pingsdorf area in Germany. And we think we can tell this from the patterns, from this daubed slip in iron, used, just doubled on with your fingers. And this is showing up in some of the vessels, some of the pieces that we found in this dig. However, we think that this is probably one of the methods of transporting wine and then we come to the residues that we can find on the inside of these pots. So we can prove that some of these come from long distances, but we can also show what people are doing with them. And the cookware, it retains the fats from beef and pork used to cook. And then we can tell exactly what people are eating. With the Torxy ware though, there is the wonderful decoration that they have. And this for me is one of the most interesting things because when we're looking at that, it's the creative expression that potters have. We've got little pellets that have been pressed and applied onto some pottery. We've got some stamps where they've created them out of wood or antler, just to stamp in little star shapes. We've got something else though on the Torxy ware vessels that is really the potter's signature. That closes the gap between us and our ancestors. 
on the big Toxy wire picture, it's very, very sizable. It's got to have lugs on the side of it for rope to go around it. It's, we think, something to actually hold ale or beer or possibly water but it's so big that it wouldn't tip easily. You couldn't actually lift it up when it's full. So those lugs on the side of it, little loops where you can put rope through to possibly attach it to your roof beams to suspend it. So tipping it would be easy. But down the sides of this vessel are long strips of clay just rolled out like sausages and stuck on with the potter's thumb. And that every one leaves a thumbprint along the pot. And that, for me, is one of the most special things, because that is a signature that is unique to the person that made that pot. And suddenly we realise we're not so very far removed from our Viking ancestors who lived here and worked here a thousand years ago.